Hello again! My name is Dominika and this is the third part of the Racetrack Robotics lesson prepared by Robocamp. In this video I'll be using cross sections and animations to explain key elements of the Racetrack robot and its working principle. You can use these instructions too if you have an active Robocamp plan. Robocamp gives you access to over 240 lesson plans for different LEGO education sets. That includes standalone lesson plans as well as full year programming curricula. Click the link in the description to get a quote for your school and a discount for annual plans. All right, so if you've been building this robot with me, you know which bricks make up which parts. Now, you need to look at this robot from another perspective. That is, recognize the mechanisms in this model. Notice how they are connected with electronics and try to understand how we can take advantage of it in the process of creating a program for this robot. Don't worry, I'll help you. First, let's see how the racetrack robot should work. The animation shows that two parts are moving, the paper track and the tiny car. Your task as the driver will be to control the car manually by means of the steering wheel made from the large cogwheel and avoid any obstacles on the road. And remember that you can swap the road template with a different one if you get bored of this track. Let's look at the electronics. Now there's the hub, the light matrix, and the motor. Find them in your robot and take a moment to see how they are all connected. The hub has two important functions. It communicates with, it communicates with your programming device, be it a laptop or a tablet, for example, whichever you'll use to run the spy cap. And it powers all the other electronic elements connected to it. The light matrix does nothing for now, but once programmed, it's going to signal the start of the race. The motor is a bit more important here. The motor head is directly connected to the track mechanism. This means that the motor propels the roll with the paper tape on it. I'll show it to you next. And makes the paper track move. Mm -hmm. This is the mechanism that we're responsible for moving the track. There's the paper tape, the axle with rubber wheels and the roll. Now the tape stretched between the axle and the roll will be moving towards the tiny car. This will produce an interesting illusion as if it's the car that's driving forward. To maintain this illusion, the tape movement must be steady, which means that the tape mustn't slide. That's why we've used rubber tires with the wheels. They provide good grip and stop the tape from sliding. Underneath this mechanism, you can find the frame, which holds the entire thing together. It also serves as a stand for the steering wheel and the car. The gate is another support, but for the lights that will signal the start of the race. The other mobile part of this robot is the tiny car at the front, which you control manually. The car itself is placed on two blue beams. Thanks to this, the car is always facing the same direction. It doesn't tilt, it doesn't turn left or right. It would look strange, especially since there are no turns on this track. Still, you need to maneuver between obstacles and for that, you use the steering wheel, which is made out of a repurposed wheel part with a light blue tire. Notice how the steering wheel is connected to the beams below. The axle goes through the very center of the wheel and one of the blue beams. But 
the two beams work in unison because they are additionally connected by the bricks underneath. I hope you've come to know your racetrack robot a bit better thanks to this video. You should know what mechanisms make up this robot, what electronics you can use here and how it's all connected together. Feel free to go back to any part of this video if you need a recap. But if everything is clear, let's create a program for this robot. I'll see you in the next video where we'll continue this racetrack lesson plan prepared by RoboCamp.